What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today I got this little guy, the TAC Life. This is just like a little home handheld ratchet, electric ratchet if you will. Um, and it's one of the cheaper options on Amazon and I just kind of wanted to do a review on it. I usually do a review on higher end tools like Milwaukee, uh, DeWalt, you know, other stuff like that. Uh, and well, I know a lot of people don't want to spend the dough for that and they like the availability of grabbing something on Amazon Prime. So let's pop this thing open, kind of see what the quality looks like on this and uh, yeah, see what comes in the kit. Got one of my favorite knives, the uh, Spyderco Dura 4. Absolutely love that knife. It's a great knife. You know, I'll leave a link down to that below too because I kind of wanted to do some different tools for Christmas if you guys are you know, kind of deciding on possibly like a good, uh, it, slightly inexpensive Christmas present. Let's just say, you know, below a hundred dollars. Well, this is a damn good option right here. Uh, this is an amazing knife. It has VG10 steel and it is made in Japan. So a very high quality. I know it looks a little cheap, but I think they're right around 70 bucks. Um, excellent knife, excellent steel on it. Okay. Let's Look at this thing. All right, now first off, did I open it incorrectly? I feel like I did. Okay, let's flip this upside down. Okay, tack life on the top here. Let's see what we got. We got our, you know, basic little instructions here. Some very, you know, basic chrome vadium, China made uh, sockets, but it does come with a quarter inch socket right there. We got the 5 16ths, 11 30 seconds, 7 16ths. See if I can find the other sockets. Okay, they kind of went flying around. So packaging, you know, it's just a blow mold packaging. It's not anything crazy. Uh, 15 30 seconds, half inch. And it looks like we're gonna have one more hiding out in here somewhere. 3 8 socket right there. It goes all the way up, 9 16. Then we have a 5 8 and we have an 11 16. So just SAE stuff. So that's your standard American type of tools. Here's the actual electric ratcheting wrench. So you can see right here, pretty small little lockout. It's not super easy ergonomically to get your finger on. It, uh, it works, so first off, that's a good thing. Um, as far as the sound goes, it sounds all right. It's definitely not a uh, high quality sounding motor on this thing at all. Uh, it definitely does seem like it's brushed. And yeah, so just some basic plastics here. So we'll check this out. So you can see like the fitment quality. It's okay. It's what you'd expect from like a China tool. You know, side looks nice. It's not too shabby. The head itself looks to be a uh, pretty good quality. I'm assuming this, this, this feels like steel to some sort of tool steel right here. Um, you know, nice tactile feel here. That does look to be made of steel for the forward and the reverse. And that does seem to work. It's greased up, so that's good. You know, they did put a little bit of grease in there, so that's nice. Uh, what's cool about this, the head is actually fairly small. Now, let me compare this to my Milwaukee version. Milwaukee's lower end uh, version of these, the head looks pretty similar, I would say. Now, this is the fuel version. This is, you know, this is the, the fancy guy. If you can hear the difference in quality here. I don't know whatever that means to you. Um, you know, they make a couple different size ones and I have quite a few and I absolutely love these and I highly recommend these to anyone looking for a wrench. However, I know this isn't really super budget friendly, right? Those things are pretty damn expensive. I think they're right around $200 a piece and I don't even think that includes the battery if I remember correctly. So this one, you know, being under the $100 price mark, it's pretty nice. What's cool though, let's try to get at, is uh, the head here. Like I was saying, the lower end Milwaukee version has a similar head, but you can see that the uh, profile is much smaller as compared to the fuel version here, much, much larger. What that's actually good for is getting into those tighter spaces, um, you know, where you don't have as much room. Let's look at the side profile here as well, right? So we got that side profile. 
you know, I'm not saying that these are on the same level by any means, but it's just something that is, you know, a comparable tool because it does the same thing, essentially. We've got a couple battery indicators on the front here. Now, I haven't charged this at all. It does look like, from what I can tell, a full charge. Pretty standard, you know, low quality, blow molded plastic. Pretty much what you'd expect from any tool manufacturer. It does come with an extra battery. This is running on Tac Life's 12 volt system. So just like Milwaukee's M12 system, you know, let's compare those batteries. Uh, the size there is, you know, it's, it's comparable. Now, I don't think that this is gonna have the battery technology by any means that the Milwaukee does. The battery life on these things is absolutely amazing. Um, but you know what, this looks like it works. So it's a 12 volt, two amp hour. And you know what, right here, I have a 12 volt, two amp hour. As far as weight and feel goes here, as far as the cells, they have a very similar weight. So I don't know if that tells you anything, but uh, yeah, I mean, th they have a similar feel, so that's good. As far as the charger goes, this is a very, very basic charger. Yeah, nothing, nothing too fancy to it, you know? It just, it looks like it's gonna work, is what it looks like it's gonna do. Um, nice and compact, so that's kinda cool. Uh, let me just show you guys what a Milwaukee charger looks like. So, in comparison, you know, the Milwaukee charger is quite a bit bigger, but this also feels like an extremely cheap charger compared to the Milwaukee charger, and I, basically throw these away because, uh, you know, I like having the M18 and the M12 version, but, uh, you know, this is something that's gonna work. So, this little kit right here, I would recommend this, we're gonna try it out, but, you know, if I'm recommending this to someone, it's not gonna be something that's using this tool every single day, in my opinion. I like to get a system that, you know, works with a bunch of other tools and that I really love, but, I will say, you know, if this is for like around the house, you don't have any tools and you're looking for something like this, this looks like it's gonna work. So, you know, if you're looking to speed up like assembling furniture and things like that, it looks like this will do the trick for you. So we'll go ahead and hit a few fasteners uh, somehow. You know, it's kind of cool that it does come with just these little sockets if you guys don't have any sockets. So like I'm saying, this is like, to me, this would be for, you know, someone that basically has nothing. Um, this would be, you know, a start. This is like starter, maybe get this for a teenager, you know, something like that. They could start out with something like this, um, you know, cause it's pretty inexpensive, but it'll help them do the trick. So maybe it would interest you guys if we tried to take this apart and just kind of see uh, what kind of construction is going on in here and what sort of electrical parts it got. It has what kind of motor. You could see it has a little, you know, a little board in there and everything. Um, I think the hardest part on this to do that is to smash out this little roll pin right here. So it does have like a little roll pin construction, uh, pretty similar to the Milwaukee setup where they have a roll pin construction. They also, you know, use some screws on the side where they use some Torx. These guys look to use some Phillips. So, I don't know, let's, uh, let's take it apart. Let's see what's inside. Sometimes this is kind of cool to see what's uh, what's inside these tools, you know? Smaller little machine screws up in the drive unit area, or I should say like the head area here. Break this open. Expose the guts. Okay, so you can see that. Let's kind of pop that over there. Boom. All right, there we go. Now you can see the button here. Oh, they give you a, they put another little pin in here to keep it together. So that's actually kind of nice to see this right here. That right there is just this little pin piece. It's, looks like it slipped in here. Slips right in there. And that adds to the construction of this to keep it together, which is pretty smart, honestly, to use in plastic. I'm sure this is very, very basic, but let's see. Okay, so we got like the little LED enhancer, if you will, uh, that just goes over the LEDs for the lighting module. All right, very, very, very basic. There's not a lot, of, a whole lot to this. We got the switch. We got the little battery connector, if you will. 
it's you know DC so you have a positive and a negative it doesn't look like it has a port for balancing the battery or anything like that um, we have a little LED light module that's the little work area module it just hooks right up to this particular motor here there's this one little diode on there yeah it's just all built into the switch so it's pretty straightforward one thing I'm kind of surprised I don't see on this is some sort of over current protection um, I really don't so there's a possibility that this thing could actually get uh, pretty hot and it might start smoking I mean it's gonna cut out but there's a possibility it could actually start like smoking or something like that I don't know um, maybe this is like a little bit of a heat sink here in the switch what it says so the switch is a 15 amp pretty pretty cool I mean look at that that's all there is to it guys it's that and then this little guy literally goes directly on the motor oh yeah and then it's just it's just pinned in there I feel like it would be nice to see a second pin right here but there is the pin right here and that kind of keeps it in and then this little area here kind of keeps it all together so I mean not too horrible really it's pretty straightforward pretty inexpensive and cheap to make you can tell you know it's pretty much just a uh, a motor but I mean that's that's all there's really is to it so right, we'll go ahead and put this thing back together fixes my little curiosity that I had here kind of just wondering you know how it went together and all that all right, so we got that all back together now and we're gonna go do a test on actually undoing a fastener I have a carriage bolt right here on my tool chest and I assembled this pretty recently Honestly, it's uh only been I don't know a few months or something. So let's go ahead and put this on reverse so Let's see Yeah, it doesn't really have the torque to break it loose now I want to try it with the Milwaukee one because we'll just kind of compare see if that has enough torque. I don't know if that bolt is super tight. Oh geez. Yeah, that one will yank right out of your freaking hand. So um, this one definitely will break the fastener loose. Let's see. Okay, so that's full torque on that. Let's go ahead and try to remove that one with this one uh, okay. mind you this thing's pretty tight <laughs> this one delivers quite a bit of torque where this one does not deliver as much fastening or loosening torque however you can use this as a regular ratchet so you know it's going to speed up the process of taking off bolts if you have the money and this is a tool that you really want um i think that you should spend three to four times as much and get the Milwaukee. Now, if it's just something that you need for around the house that you think is gonna speed up projects, like assembling Ikea furniture or, you know, something along those lines, maybe, you know, busting the nut loose manually with the ratcheting feature and then just kind of speeding up getting the nut off, then this works fine for that. But, you know, if you're really trying to get like any sort of fasteners with any sort of torque, and have that as a working torque that you're not going to need to like you know retorque down yourself um i would not recommend it for that so you know it's more of like a speed it up manual ratchet if you will where this one is more you know your automatic ratchet that's uh gonna get it to the torque you want uh the first time so anyways i hope that helps i hope you guys enjoy this video on the cheapest ratcheting wrench on amazon uh, I'll leave a link down to this below, and we'll talk to you soon. Later, guys, and wrench on.